Good evening. And uh, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, my goal is to actually provide a different perspective uh, relative to transition and adult support and, and what I see. So I am coming at this from a, a different viewpoint in that I spent over 25 years in the business community running organizations um, and felt at a point in time where it was time for me to make a change and make a difference. And, and my niece, who's now 21, um, is an amazing young woman. And before I got involved with the autism community, I'd had a conversation with my sister, who's a single mom, and we, we know what we've all gone through to help her with uh, my niece and her, her younger sister. And uh, we had a conversation, I said, what are you gonna do with Nicole as she gets older and transitions out of school? And she said, I'm gonna take care of her, sorry, for the rest of my life. And your heart sinks when you hear that. And so I had no idea that I would ever get involved in the autism community. It was eight months later when I was speaking with a friend who said, I know you're in transition, and you want to get involved in a, a, a charitable nonprofit organization, well, I think I've got one for you. And it's going to be a big challenge. And so I joined 18 months ago to reestablish and rebuild this organization on a statewide level. Coming from my perspective, and when I looked at this, there are lots of resources. So when we think about being positive, there are a tremendous number of resources in the greater metro Atlanta area. I can't say that as you get outside of Metro Atlanta, because as I travel throughout the state, there's little to no resources. And that's a whole other set of challenges for us. But in Metro Atlanta, we have great resources. The issue is, we don't know where to turn. We, do, we, we handle calls every single day, and parents are looking for support and service. We have a very fragmented community. In some cases, it's kind of dysfunctional in terms of what's available in the community. Our role, so I view our role primarily is to ensure that you, your families, your children, young adults, can find the resources that they need when they need them and where they need them. So when you look at our mission is to improve the quality of life for everyone touched by autism. What does that really mean? We actually believe that we can serve as an ally that's dedicated to maximizing the opportunity for individuals with autism their families and communities in Georgia to live fulfilled lives. And do that by advocating for acceptance and inclusion, and then also accelerating access to the specific resources that you're gonna need over a lifetime. So this is over a lifetime. It's about ensuring that everyone, because we are all blessed with different abilities, gifts and different abilities and talents. And we believe firmly that regardless of your ability, you can have a bright future. So last year we started a program and we call it The Future is Bright. It's now become part of our overall mission and our mantra because we do firmly believe that everyone can have a bright future. And in doing that, we actually established four key priorities. So I'm gonna to talk to you quickly about those, but really put a perspective on what I've seen in talking to families throughout the state and across the country and looking at resources because as I began to look at, especially in Atlanta where there's a lot of emphasis on early, the early ages in education, through some of the many resources that we have, there's nothing from a transition adult standpoint. It's a virtual cliff. Uh, so what we did is, when I looked at the organization, I said, okay, what are the core things? Because, I mean, at the end of the day, we could boil the ocean, or we could try to. I mean, there's so many things. I travel the state and I'm overwhelmed with, oh my God, this is what we need to do here, we need to do this, and you just can't do that. So what are the four things? we? First and foremost, ensuring that you can get to the, you have the resource or access to resources that you need when you need them. So we have an, a toll-free number where you can call, you can talk to one of our parent allies. A parent ally is, is a parent of a child with a developmental disability, and specifically autism, who's walked that path. Because at the end of the day, when a family gets the diagnosis, it's overwhelming, right? And it's we want you to know that you're not alone. And there are others that have walked down that path. So we think positively in terms of you're not alone, there are others that have walked down the path, and there are others that want to help and provide that guidance. Additionally, we're adding, we're creating, um, this year we'll actually create six to seven family and adult support groups 
throughout the state. And where there are ones that exist in the metro Atlanta, like North Fulton and Cobb, down in Fayette County, we're gonna help sponsor and continue to support those, but make sure those are, you know, everyone that we, everyone knows about, that they are accessible, that um, we bring the, bring the community together in a collaborative environment. Um, but it's important that our parents and our caregivers have that support every day, because it is overwhelming. And need to understand what path can I go down? What experiences have other, others had? And then on the adult side, it's incredibly important. We just, our recent board member um, is a gentleman who's 48 who was diagnosed at the age of 40. And he has been instrumental in helping us understand what we need to do in the adult community. And we're actually going to, he's actually going to chair um, an adult advisory board that we've started. We'll have an advisory board of young adults and adults on the spectrum that will advise me and our board of directors on the types of services that are needed uh, to support them as they go through, as we think about employment, but also independent living and self-determination. The, um, and then the other areas around education. So education across it for individuals, families, for business leaders and business organizations, which leads me to adult employment support. Um, our, our, we lo are looking and we started a program uh, in last year around transition and adult employment support. Specifically right now focusing on adult employment support, which will focus on, one, identifying the, re there, are, there are lots of resources. Every time I go to a meeting, I end up meeting someone, a resource that I ne didn't even know existed. And I'm thinking, wow, I, I'm in meetings all the time, meeting different resources, but I was in a meeting not too long ago with Georgia Vo uh, Vocational Rehab, and then three organizations just in the Roswell Alpharetta area that are doing employment support. They're doing transition and education. They're doing the teaching life skills. So our goal is to, to bring those resources to bear and then supplement that so that we're, from an adult employment support standpoint, it's about one, not only teaching life and social communicative skills, but as we talk, hygiene skills, interviewing, how to approach and, and uh, from a, a job search standpoint. Guiding uh, our young adults and adults with respect to that, and then helping them build, it's really about job readiness, but helping them build a portfolio of work. And I can't stress that enough, even at the early ages. We know, I have a great example of a, a close friend of ours who, and I, when I first came on board, I sat with her for about four hours, because she's, she's done some amazing work. And her son, brilliant, growing up very violent, um, you know, just huge struggles. And, but she had the patience, and, and one day, they were walking down a path, and she was Sean. And she looked back, and there he was, squatting down, picks up a little flower, brings it up. He's like, Mom, four-leaf clover. She's like, no. Can't be. So she goes, where'd you find that? It's like right back there. So she walks back, gets on her hands and knees, and she's combing through everything there. There was nothing. It was the only one. And she identified immediately that this, and he loves plants. You fast forward 15 years, and he graduated from Georgia with a horticulture degree, and now is at Cornell getting an MA and PhD. Has no social or executive functioning skills whatsoever. Dad calls him every morning. Says, here's your schedule for the day. And then in the afternoon, they've got it set up so that he can actually see whether Sean's eaten. <laughs> He's, he'll call and say, what's going on? I haven't eaten today. Well, how do you know? I just checked your card. You haven't done anything today. So he, he doesn't have those skills. But really, his mom found that he had a gift and a talent. And that's what I would encourage everyone. I mean, we all have, and I would encourage all of you to start to think about it. It goes back to, you know, we talk person-centered planning and assessments and evaluations. For me, it's simply, what are our gifts, talents, and interests, and strengths? And then how do we nourish those? And then begin to look at building a portfolio of their work. So that, because going through, having interviewed, and hired and fired hundreds of people, I understand that whole process too well. 
It's difficult for anyone to go through an interview process, the first interview especially. So it, it's even more difficult for some of our young adults on the spectrum. And so how do we get past that? So there are a couple things that we're doing. One is we, do, we are going to work with the port, uh, around portfolio work because you can show your body of work and say, here's what I've accomplished. It's not like anything, it's the same that I would expect anyone else to do. I've done it my entire career. Here's what I've done, here's what I've achieved. Here are my references, here are testimonials. Here are physical examples of, of what I've accomplished. I'm working with a young man, a, a young man for me, but he's about 30, um, and he wants to be a writer. He's got a, a, a BA, uh, BS in, in, um, in writing. And, what we're going to do now is start, he's going to start to write a blog and we're going to use that as his portfolio of work that he can start to take to potential employees. And so while he's doing that, we're now contacting using our network. And this is another, we all have a network of contacts that we've developed over years. Leverage that, con that, that your network to at least have conversations. So to arrange for conversations for your son or daughter. That's what we do now. So when I am speaking to someone and they've got, there's, there's a young adult that is looking for employment, I immediately ask for the resume and then ask to set up a meeting and then begin to look at my network of contacts and then and talk to them about, okay, here's how you network. Because they have a network, their families have networks. So how do you begin to expand your exposure it's a lot easier to walk into an environment where you've got personal references or folks that know you, that know that person you're meeting with. Um, and with this, this young man, he happened to call us. I ended up talking to him. My personal passion is around ensuring that our young adults and adults get employment and keep employment. So I met with him and I said, please bring your resume. And this was our first meeting. And he shows up completely disheveled, shorts, shirt hanging out, flip-flops, um, and you know, I kind of expected it. <laughs> so it was not, I was not like, oh, you know, it wasn't a big deal. But I asked him for his resume, and he said, oh, it's in, my, it's in my truck. I was like, okay, well, we'll get that later. So we started talking, and we had, you know, a nice conversation, but I could immediately tell this was, you know, he's had, a dozen first interviews and they've never gone anywhere. So immediately I start to think about, okay, let's, you know, it's everything from your appearance to hygiene and these are all the things that we need to integrate in terms of employment support. And then we go out to this truck and he gets, you know, he's going to dig underneath the truck, under the seat and he pulls out a resume that's all, I said, why don't you send it to me an email? <laughs> <laughs> And so, you know, he, and it was, you know, it was great because, an unintended consequence, but he wrote a really nice thank you with his, res, with his resume. And now we're working on trying to help him find uh, employment. So our goal is to not only help with the resources, but it's also to provide that coaching and guidance. And we know, and, and I think it was a good point, not all of our kids are going to go to college. It's just the reality. One of my, well, board members, but he and I had a conversation not too long ago. His son is 15. It's like, Ray, we just came to the realization that he's not going to go. So what do we do now? Let's look at what, his, what he loves. But, so he loves music. He loves vinyl, old records. Are. Let's get him a job at the local record store, just to start. And, and that, those are the things that we're working on. So part of the employment support program is not only just helping gain employment, but there's a huge scary statistic which says that most of our adults on the spectrum that gain employment lose it in six to eight months. So the next phase of this is continued employment support so that we are, we have, there's two things that we can do, right? When you look at the prevalence rates, Right, the numbers are staggering, which means, which in simple terms means that when I go to a company, highly likely that there's a large population within that company that one are either on the spectrum or two are parents or have a direct connection. 
So we'll build a mentorship program within that organization. So they can help, because you go into any of these large corporations with policies and procedures, it's overwhelming, let alone just doing the day-to-day -day work. So be that mentor and guide. Companies, all companies have mentorship programs. We need to expand it um, for the, that support level. And then have coaches that were from a counseling standpoint. So every three to six months you're checking in saying, and, and working with not only the individual, but with the employer. And, you know, it's not a, you know, it's not this magic wand that we can just do this and it's automatically everything's going to be perfect, but it's a start and it's, it's not there today. So one of the things that we're doing now is we're working uh, with, we've been, I've met with a dozen different companies. We're putting together a round table of HR leaders and talent acquisition leaders to begin to educate them around the spectrum. And employment and the value of our young adults and adults, uh, the value that we can bring to the organization itself. And that's just the start. There's so much more that has to happen. We need to extend transition programs that are going now on in schools outside of the school and start to, we talk about vocational training and, and trade, teaching a young, a young person trade. So if we see that they've got, they're mechanically inclined, Small appliance repair. Um, become a mechanic. I mean, those are, there's, there's various different carpentry. There's lots of different things that we can think about in terms of in those areas. The other areas on the creative side, on the arts. We gave a scholarship to a young man last year to go to our autism conference. 17 year old, um, kind of moderate to severe, nonverbal, got the headset on, and phenomenal artist. I mean, phenomenal, inspirational. And it's because, mom, and what happened is mom saw that he had a talent. He used to use Play-Doh to make figurines for the Weather Channel. Fascinated by the Weather Channel, started making these little caricatures, and that came into art and now, I mean, literally, unbelievable work. Um, but it starts there. It starts with early ages, in the teens, starting to, really identify what are their strengths, gifts, and talents, and then starting to nourish those. And then, you know, we're gonna work as hard as we can to help ensure that we get the resources that are needed in the community, and then build programs around that where they don't exist. So thank you very much.